Hello everyone, welcome back to the workshop. I finally got my tripod fixed so you guys can see this ugly face. Today we're going to be working on a couple of little machining projects, the big one being a new fly cutter for the universal head on the K&T mill. So before we get to the actual machining, let me show you guys what exactly we're making. This here is a rough fly cutter body that I built. It has a vertical slot on the back and a horizontal one in the front. Now this is going to sit down like this. You'll be able to put a tool in here or you'll be able to flip it around and put a tool in here vertically. That'll be nice because then I can use different styles of tools and different shanks and things like that. Uh, lathe tools, high speed steel tools, etc, etc. I'll be able to build my own custom ones. The fly cutters I've been using, this one has been used for the uh, vertical spindle with three quarter inch shank. It's just your regular turning tool that's been stick welded to a body to a three quarter inch shank, more or less. Now it does have a screw on it, but those screws they just didn't hold. And I couldn't really put multiple screws in there. I might have been able to get away with two, but still sticking out as far as I had to to do a lot of the jobs I do, uh, it it was best to just weld it. Now, the one that I used for the horizontal spindle is the same thing, just with an ugly inch and a quarter shank. Um, now this one, I broke, I had three bolts in it, broke two of them, said screw it, I'm going to stick weld this in. So, uh, they worked, they worked very well, they gave me mirror finishes, but uh, these are very, very crude. You might call these the Russian fly cutters, they're... They got it done, but they're not the best. So, the new one that I'm building is going to be much, much nicer. The new one is actually going to go onto this shank or this uh, 40 taper tool. Uh, I'm going to weld it to this so that it's a more rigid uh, system. So I have the fly cutter all welded up after I ground it, and it's still pretty damn warm, so while it's cooling down, I want to show you guys some recent acquisitions. Here in the cutter cabinet, I have some new goodies. I have some convex and concave milling cutters. These are going to be nice for making forms in uh, forging dies for fullers. For swages and such, these guys here would be amazing for swages. Um, I need to make some arbors for them, but I have a plan to make some arbors. Not only do I have these guys, these are all just straight convex and concave. I also have this stack that the seller believed were convex and concave. Now, if you don't recognize what those are, I'll let you know right now. That there... Let's look at the let's look at the information on it. Emergency job came through, so I got to cut that up. So we're gonna have that in the background while I'm talking about the cutter. Let's walk away from the hacksaw. So those three cutters you guys saw are a special type of cutter. Inch and a half CP. 35 tooth and over, 875 roll, AN, or AM standard, SPET. Now that, this is a chain or a sprocket mill. This is a sprocket cutting horizontal milling cutter. 
sprockets for making sprockets. For inch and a half pitch, 875 roll. Now, what exactly that information means, but part of me wants to say 875 rollers, but that doesn't look like 7 eighths to me, but I can measure it. These would make really good fullers. Imagine that profile on a handrail or something similar. That'd be really neat. Not only did I get these guys, I also got a whole stack of gear cutters as well as a couple of bevel gear cutters. All right, now that it's been welded, it's cooled down, and I even took it to the 2x72 grinder and ground down the welds just to make it look nicer. Now I have to do a little bit of machining to it. See, this slot here isn't quite deep enough. I only noticed this recently. Um, it needs to be about an eighth inch deeper. Now I might notice it's a bit cocked in the vise. I want my tools, whenever they sit down in there, to sort of point, uh, to have a little bit more relief uh, than they would if it were flat. Now this isn't all that important for carbide tooling because, or carbide inserted tooling because I can always just make my holders or use, you know, lathe tool holders that uh, have the tool sort of sticking out a little bit more where it doesn't matter as much if uh, you have a little bit of a rake angle here. Whereas with high speed tooling, if I'm cutting aluminum or something and I want to use sharp high speed steel, I want a little bit of angle. I can't put angle on these tools and cock them over if they're flat. I can only grind down. I can't weld up or anything like that. I can't heat them up and bend them. Uh, theoretic theoretically, I could, but that's just not the proper way to do it. This here is. So I'm going to mill down. Also, when I welded this, uh, I only welded one side. I didn't weld both sides. And because of that, it's warped. And while that does give me a little bit of negative angle, which can be useful, eh, I don't really want negative angle. So I'm just going to mill everything flat and true and get it done. All right, so after milling this, I had to have lunch, and then uh, I helped out with a small emergency job. Uh, as you guys might have seen in the video, I had a couple of issues whenever I first started milling this. What happened was the Y-axis wasn't locked down, and so it just pulled the part, or not pulled the part, but pulled the whole table and the whole saddle, everything out, and uh, kind of screwed things up a little bit. The slot ended up a bit wider than I really wanted it to be, but that's not a horrible issue. There's still uh, material up at the front corner there that will support the tool. The angle is what I wanted it to be. Everything is fine. It is a bit wider than I wanted it. I wanted it to be a bit more of a snug fit than that. If that becomes an issue, I can always shim it or uh, weld in, let's say a washer or something, or just Fill that whole area in with weld and remill the whole thing. I really wanted to fit that was close to this one. Just a couple of thou, not a couple of thou, that's uh, 15 or so, about 15 thou, I would say, uh, worth a play. But it's not a horrible issue. Now, what we need to do is drill holes uh, in the top of this to hold in, you know, the piece, the cutting tool. And drill holes over here to hold in the cutting tools. I also need to drill a big hole in the center for the uh, tool holder for the actual taper that it will be on. And uh, I also need to drill and tap another special hole here that, well, we'll talk about that one later. So let's get to it. Well, I forgot to hit record as I was drilling all of these holes and tapping them. So... That happened. Drilled and tapped all the set screw holes for all the tools. 
for the two sides the ones for holding the horizontal tool and the vertical tool also drilled and tapped this hole which we're going to use later to do something special and i also drilled a hole directly in the middle uh, for the tool now the tool or i guess for the shank more or less the shank is now in the middle uh now i said i had to turn this down i have to turn it down to half inch now i could do that on the lathe but there's really no reason it fits perfectly in the mill spindle and uh, the vise is already on here so i just clamped up a tool a turning tool ccmt uh, turning tool and i'm going to use it to turn this guy down to half inch So I have the new fly cutter mounted here in the spindle. It's been welded up. It just needs a little bit of deburring at this point, but it still works just fine. You might be wondering why I put this little threaded hole in here. See, when I'm tramming the head in this axis, it's very easy. There's no weight. There's nothing that's stopping it. It's pretty easy to get it very, very accurate. But in this direction, sort of... Uh, perpendicular to the table uh, it's it's difficult the weight of the head just pulls the whole thing down anytime you loosen up all those bolts and you can drag them but then if you need to move the head up it's just it's a pain it's very it can be very difficult at times uh, sometimes what I would do is I would bring it up past so I knew that I had to bring it down I'd bring it up snug up the bolts and sit there and beat on it with a rubber mallet, which I wasn't a fan of, uh, and it's not the greatest way to do it. So I put this bolt in here so that I could, or this hole in here, so that I could stick a bolt in there and use the bolt to take the brunt of the force. And then I could sit there, use this bolt on the table or something else as I'm tramming it, and I can lower it down and use it to move the head ever so slightly and then start you know sweeping that way i can use it to hold it i can use it to indicate or not indicate but to actually move the head uh, it'll make uh, tramming this head so much easier also it gives me a good point to sort of grab onto way out here at the end i can sit there and use like a wrench or something for the other axes it just it helps quite a bit. So now what I'm going to do, I got the vise out of the way. I'm going to tram the head and see if there's any improvements I would make to it. Maybe some kind of swivel on the bottom here, but I don't know if that's even necessary. So let's get that done. I will do, I'll tram it off camera and then I'll bring the vise back and we'll take a test cut with this and uh, see how good it does. If it's very rigid or if it's loose or what. So, I'll get that done. So here's what that fly cutter looks like with a tool in it. I uh, finally freed those tools from my old fly cutters. I uh, took them out, I ground out the welds, took them out of the holder. Finally, you know, took out the temporary welds after holding them in there. Now I'm going to take a skim cut on this chunk of forklift tine. Um, that's just to see how it does, just to see how well this uh, tool does. Now I'm not going to film the entire thing. I'm going to be going at 150 RPM and a half inch a minute. That's cooking for this insert. That's going at a couple hundred surface feet per minute. Now I could probably uh, bump it up quite a bit. I could probably bump it up. Right now it's running 250 to 300 surface feet per minute. I could probably bump it up to 500 or so, but I don't have a whole lot of these inserts right now. I need to order more. So I'm going to take it easy on the ones I have. So I'll start her up and get her going.
And then I'll bring you guys back when it's done. <clears throat> Well, that's the surface finish I got off of this fly cutter. Not horrible, but not great. You can kind of see there's a bit of waviness in there. It's easier to see in real life. So it does reflect, which is nice, but it's not hard to get something to reflect. Uh, it's harder to get something to reflect clearly. I might play around with my feeds and speeds and try to make a little mirror, uh, but frankly for most of what I do, that is perfectly fine. That is actually excellent for 90% of what I do. Uh, now I did build this fly cutter with a specific purpose in mind. I have a big chunk of cast iron. It's about uh, 12 inches by, I want to say 18, uh, 18 and 19. And I want to plane it. I want to make the whole thing incredibly flat. I'm going to be using this guy to do that. And knowing that now I have an easy way to trim the head. And I can use this and make take multiple passes without a heavy line uh, between the two passes from the head being out of tram. Uh, it's going to be a lot easier. Now, what that big chunk of cast iron is for, it is for a project that I'm going to be starting on here soon. That's for the shop. Now, I'm not going to let you guys know yet, but keep watching. Well, if you made it this far in... Oh, no. Well, if you've made it this far in the video, thank you for watching. Uh, I have more projects on the way. I have some things I'd like to film soon. And I have um, a couple of machines on the way and uh, other tools for the shop. A big one is going to be a DRO for the KNT. I have a DRO on the way. It's coming sometime early next week, Tuesday, Wednesday. Uh, I might be getting a new lathe here soon. I really hope I get a new lathe here soon. I had to use the uh, Chinese 12 by 36 today for an emergency job. I just needed to make a little uh, seal driver and it was pain to go from 17 inch by 54 lathes with seven and a half horsepower where you can take quarter inch cuts all day long and they don't care where you know you can really push those machines every single machine that we have at work I can really push uh, in fact I had a milling machine the other day that I was running at 1200 RPM with a two inch face mill at 14 inches a minute. I can push those machines. I can push this K&T pretty good too. I can stall the motor out in this K&T, but I cannot efficiently machine with this Chinese 12 by 36. No matter what I do to it, no matter what, it's just not very good. So I've been on the search for a new lathe and I found one and hopefully I'm coming here soon. Um, other projects, I have the motor rebuild that I'm still doing. Um, I sent the head or sent the block off to a machine shop to get it professionally worked over. I tried to hone it out myself and frankly, honing it out myself, that was a waste of money. Waste of a hone, that was a waste of stones. It didn't work out very well. I, I should have, I should have just sent it off in the machine shop. The, in the first place, but you know, you, you live and you learn. Um, I thought I could do it myself and to the best of my knowledge I could, but it ended up being more hassle than it was worth and I couldn't put in the time I needed to put into it. I just didn't have the time. So send it off to a machine shop. Hopefully when it comes back, I'll have some of the other things and I'll get ready to put it in my truck. And I might make a couple of videos on that if people are interested, if not, you know, there are better engine builders out there like Power Nation. That channel is really good. I watch it quite a bit. Um, other projects, I still need to finish the shearing dies for the uh, grinder, or not for the grinder, for the punch press. I still need to finish the uh, welding cart. There's a couple more things I need to do to it, but that's just the way it goes. So. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and follow for more. Click the little bell icon, do whatever you want. 
You're all grown adults. Do what you want. Have a good day.